So, this guy, Jason Ward, the owner, editor, and content supervisor of this website, MakingStarWars.net, has produced quite an extensive list of Battlefront rumours. And this list makes fans, such as myself, scream with joy, and further fulfills our deep desire to hear things about the upcoming game. However, as the title clearly states, these are rumours. And just to clarify, the official definition of the word rumour is, as a noun, a currently circulating story or report of uncertain or doubtful truth, or as a verb, to be circulated as an unverified account. And at this moment in time, we have not been provided with a source as to where this information was obtained and who by. Therefore, we can only assume and speculate with what we've been provided. And as shown at the end of the behind the scenes video that was released last year, it was said that we can expect more about the game this spring. Therefore, I'm anticipating that we'll have a clearer perception as to what we can expect from the game then. The Battlefront Network, giving you your daily bills of Battlefront content. So, welcome everybody, my name is Tom and you're watching the Battlefront Network today, thank you for tuning in. So, the information that's in this video actually came out a week ago, uh, I think it was a week ago on th last Thursday, I think it was, uh, a, the article was released on MakingStarWars.net that revealed all of these so-called rumours for the game, and I was going to make a video then, but then I decided I might wait until an actual source this information is revealed or comes up so I've been waiting uh, since then and so far we haven't been given a source so I I'm still seeing these as just rumors and just like speculation uh, I'm not really trying to take anything from these and also because I was acted I was actually accidentally plugging my uh, camera USB lead into my Blue Yeti microphone now they are really similar so you know, it's easy to make the mistake, and I was plugging it in, and I thought, oh, how come my microphone isn't working? And I had to fid fiddle it around a little bit, and it, it started to work. So I started recording, and I thought, oh, the quality of this sounds terrible. So I thought, oh, my microphone must, must have broke, or must be, uh, you know, not working anymore, wearing away. So I stopped recording, but I kept the video I made as a template, uh, in case it did start working again. Uh, and then I realized that I'd been plugging the wrong USB lead in. And so I tried the actual one. And I thought, oh, damn, I'm a, I'm a fool. <laughs> so I've been accidentally plugging uh, the camera lead in and uh, not plugging the right lead into the microphone. So here we are. Now, the first point raised on the article is the story of Star Wars Battlefront's campaign will span pretty much the entire Star Wars saga. Now, when I see that, I imagine a campaign having elements from each film in the saga, of course, but we wouldn't play it through as a consecutive story, so to speak. I imagine the campaign spanning episode four, uh, episode 4, 5 and 6, but then having flashback type sections that take us back to the Clone Wars era. And of course, if the campaign were to span the entire saga, then I'd be almost certain that we'd see big iconic moments such as the Battle of Geonosis, uh, the Space Battle of Coruscant, the Battle of Hoth, and the destruction of the Death Star, etc, etc. And if that were to be the case, I'd absolutely love it because the original trilogy is of course my favourite, I don't know about you, uh, but I just love that uh, era, it's fantastic, and I'm sure that everyone would love to you know, relive all those iconic moments and the story and just the atmosphere, especially in uh, the Battlefront game, the title, and of course with Frostbite 3, would be absolutely fantastic. The graphics, the lighting, the textures, just everything, the destruction, uh, you know, available uh, to add to the Star Wars universe and to be able to give players an experience they may not have had before uh, in the Star Wars universe. So that would be fantastic. And just to add the, have the actual Clone Wars there uh, in the background uh, uh, would be nice. Uh, just have it just ha to have it at least in the game maybe not like a massive focus maybe that could be for DLC or the game afterwards uh, for example a battlefront 2 if they were to do such a thing uh, but I think that the original trilogy would be better for the campaign in my opinion but let me know what you think in the comment section below about that one and this next point supports my assumption and speculation. The majority of the campaign will take place during the original trilogy era. All of the battles and settings that you would expect to be there will be playable. It was said that the campaign itself is pretty long when compared to the other first person shooters. And as we were shown in the behind the scenes video and with the concept art revealed and information released, we can make a strong assumption that this is how the game could turn out. 
The Death Star, Hoth and Endor were shown, along with Tatooine being talked about, so hopefully we'll be able to play through almost all of the settings and iconic scenes in the Star Wars universe. And reading that the campaign will be pretty long compared to other first person shooters is actually really reassuring as the original Battlefront games 1 and 2 had rather short campaigns and were not as story driven as they could have been. Also the Battlefield 4 campaign which is a game that of course DICE developed was also very short so I'm counting on DICE and LucasArts to maybe knuckle down on the campaign slash story section for this game and to try and make it more than something you just play once and then forget about. But with DICE being the developer behind the game and of course with past examples I'm assuming the game will be more of a multiplayer based uh, video game especially with the game running on Frostbite 3 and the large audience of longtime fans that will be waiting to play the game because uh, of course you want to have everyone playing together so there's not a uh, a lot of people that would want to just play the campaign. Of course, we all want to, uh, but everyone wants to play online because that was just fantastic, especially with uh, instant action and the multiplayer, those those kind of things, you know, it's just the huge battles. So I'm assuming they're going to go for that kind of thing, but, you know. There is huge potential for the game and for the Star Wars franchise as a whole uh, because players can be immersed in and experience the Star Wars universe with the help of Frostbite 3 like they have never done before. And the game could be connected across the vast array of Star Wars products that LucasArts and Disney have at their disposal, giving us a more integrated and connected universe for us to play. And since Battlefront is the first video game to be considered canon in the Star Wars universe, then I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing various connections with the game uh, from different products and media. There will be some segments of the campaign which take place between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. There won't be a lot because, in their words, Lucasfilm has a lot of plans for that era. This is rather interesting as it is very relatable to how Microsoft and 343 Industries went about connecting the stories of Halo 3 and Halo 4. However, they did this with the help of a short online series called Forward Unto Dawn. Now, the, ser the series was actually fantastic and was a perfect way of giving players an insight into what happened between Halo 3 and Halo 4 and gave us a good introduction to the characters that ended up being featured in the game. And if this turns out to be correct, that we'll be able to play content that is centered around the era between Episode 6 and Episode 7, then I imagine it is a deliberate strategy by LucasArts and Disney uh, that gives potential customers an incentive to purchase the game. And the content that we could see could give us an introduction to the characters we'll see in the new film, and what the characters of the original trilogy were doing throughout that time. However, of course, it does say Lucasfilm has a, a lot of plans for that era, so we may only be provided with a basic detail uh, surrounding that uh, era that sp spans only one campaign mission or something along those lines. The last section of the campaign takes place before and during the open segment of The Force Awakens, but don't expect anything too revealing because the game is expected to ship about a month before the movie releases. Now, we have in fact been informed that we can expect to see some Star Wars 7 The Force Awakens content in the game, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was the case. I reckon that, if this was to happen, we'd see characters that feature in the film and be provided with a very short and basic introduction to the story that smoothly slides players into the storyline when or if they see the film. However, I think that the game will release a little closer to the film, uh, maybe two weeks before or so, as it was stated that the game will be released alongside the film, and with all the marketing that the film will have, will certainly aid the game. So I'd imagine it will be a little bit closer, but we'll have to wait and see when we're given an official release date. This next point is one that I think got everyone really excited when these rumours were put out there onto the internet, and that is, Star Wars Battlefront will feature segments in which you play as both good, the good guys, Old Republic, Rebellion and Republic, and the bad guys, the Separatists and the Empire. It was specifically stated that there will be a small portion of prequel trilogy content. You will participate in a couple of battles from the Star Wars The Clone Wars and the space battle above Coruscant from the beginning of the Reset Revenge of the Sith. Now, just hearing that and reading it is just like, whoa. I mean, imagine uh, that in the game, all of our dreams come true. I mean, obviously, uh, ever since we heard about uh, Battlefront and it's actually in development by DICE uh, in 2013, I think it was, um, 
we've all been waiting for a announcement on the Clone Wars side of things uh, for the game. And so far, we ha actually haven't. We've only been shown the uh, original trilogy content and era uh, stuff for the game. We've been shown all the vehicles and the weapons and the stormtroopers and the things like that. Uh, but we haven't been shown any Clone Wars stuff. And of course, that got everyone thinking, well, maybe they're not going to put it in the game. But ever since this rumor uh, list came out, everyone was like... <gasps> whoa, well, maybe they might put it in, and it got everyone's hopes up again. Uh, but uh, just be careful, don't get your hopes up too much, because if a, a trailer is released or something like that at GDC or in a few weeks' time or, you know, at E3 this year, and it doesn't show any Clone Wars, then uh, don't, don't be disheartened, because, of course, you know, uh, they're doing what they can to make this game amazing for us, and whatever they do, I imagine it's going to be fantastic, so uh, just don't get too down about it. But hopefully the Clone Wars is in the game, because if it is, that would be amazing, because uh, of all the fun we had on Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, uh, the maps, Geonosis, that was a fantastic map on Battlefront 1, uh, just absolutely brilliant. And just hearing that we'll be able to, uh, or we may be able to, or we could be able to, uh, actually participate in the battle above Curizon from the beginning of the Re Revenge of the Sith in Frostbite 3 in a space battle in the new Battlefront would be, whoa, amazing. Because, uh, of course, it was uh, in Battlefront 2, but it wasn't, of course, that intense. It was just like a normal space battle. Uh, but I can imagine with Frostbite 3, and wow, it would be amazing to see that. Uh, and hearing that we can play the Old Republic as well, that will be amazing to see, just in Battlefront. Of course, there are a lot of mods for that, uh, but having it... In the game is something official, uh, like a default setting. That'll be fantastic. Uh, so hopefully, uh, they do come to their senses and actually release the Clone Wars for the game alongside the uh, alongside the original trilogy content. Or you never know, they may do it as a DLC type thing. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see for that. So stick around, uh, you know, look around at E3 and stuff like that, uh, and we might get some confirmation on whether the Clone Wars is there or not, because of course he did say we're going to get shown in Spring 2015, so I'm anticipating a massive surprise or reveal, because if you look at the developers on Twitter, all of the tweets are indicating that they are working hard on something, there's something big that they've been doing recently, and they were actually um, showing it off at the EA headquarters, uh, in Red Shores, so hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, that could be in fact true, so yes. For both the Republic, that's what the good guys are being called in the production here, and the Empire sections, you'll be playing characters that actually appear in The Force Awakens. Now that is really interesting because uh, most of these points actually say something about the game tying in with the characters, or the start of the story of The Force Awakens, or the story between Episode 6 and Episode 7. So with that there and in mind, I'm... And of course, we do know that some Force Awakens content will be in the game. Not a lot, but we do know that it's actually going to be there because it was said. Um, I can't remember who it was said by, but it was said. I think it was last year. Uh, so that is really interesting. So hopefully, um, you know, we are able to play as those characters and be introduced to them. Because uh, that will be a fantastic way of, you know, introducing us to the film. Uh, so if the game comes out before, you know, we'll have a pretty good understanding of what the characters are like, who they are. And where they where they fit in the story, um, in the Star Wars universe, and of course the new trilogy, which is fantastic, and it'll just be good to get a uh, a new fresh start, a fresh set of characters, a fresh story to experience. Because of course we've all, we've all experienced uh, the original trilogy, the prequel, many many times before in lots of different products and media. Uh, so I think it's good that they're adding some Star Wars Seven content in here, uh, just to give it a bit more fresh look. And hopefully they actually continue to add more um, Star Wars 7 content as uh, we actually go on. And of course more the new trilogy content. That will be fantastic to see. So this this is going to be something that is going to excite a lot of fans. Including myself. And it's something we've been asking for for absolutely ages. And that is space to land battles are absolutely happening. But will only be available in certain game modes. Now of course these are rumours so we can't actually... Um, take that as confirmation that it's going to be in the game. We need, we actually need official 
confirmation or a statement from DICE and EA uh, to let us know it's going to be in the game. So unfortunately, uh, we still can't say or know it's going to be in the game. Uh, but it's something we've been asking for as a community for Battlefront um, for ages and ages and ages. And every single comment and every single video ever about Battlefront. And hopefully, or maybe DICE and EA have heard our calls as a community and are actually giving customers what they want in Star Wars Battlefront, the new game. But there is something that could, in fact, maybe help confirm this or maybe reassure us that this could actually be happening in the game. And that is a quote by the, des the design director on Battlefront, Nicholas Fegrias, who gave a little quote in an IGN article a few weeks ago uh, in the concept art for Endor that was revealed for the game. And he said, We have actually made the decision to specifically tailor certain maps to certain game modes. So, and since it's... And since this, quote, this uh, point actually says um, space to land will only be available in certain game modes, maybe they, of course, have you know designed maps like a planet and then, of course, a uh, star destroyer or something like that in space, uh, in orbit around the planet. Um, they design maps like that for space to land, specifically for that game mode. So that would be amazing to see. That would be just like, whoa! In Frostbite 3, in Battlefront, space to land battles, amazing. Now, of course, I, th I think we saw it in the... Um, free radical version of Battlefront 3. I think that was I think it was available in that game as well. So maybe that's another reason why they're doing it or they could be doing it. Um so and the game in itself, Space Land, would require a specifically tailored map to use because it would be absolutely massive and you know you know would just have to be for that game mode. So I'm guessing uh we could actually see some variant or actually see it in the game so let me know in the comment section below what you think but i'm i'm pretty hopeful it's going to be in there so we'll have to wait and see uh until you know spring or whenever they choose to reveal some information for the game but <laughs> fingers crossed and the final two points that actually caught my eye in this massive list uh and the first one is that whoever has provided these rumours, this source says that on a particular screen in the office or the, you know, the, in DICE, where they're actually developing Battlefront, they saw a listing of maps for the multiplayer mode. And there was a lot of stuff that you'd expect to see in the game uh, like this. Uh, Hoth, uh, Episode 5, Endor, Episode 6, Alderaan, Coruscant, Yavin, Episode 4. So... Maybe, maybe uh, or hopefully, we could be seeing these maps indeed. Because since we've only been shown a lot of the original trilogy uh, era content, um, I'm guessing we're going to see a lot of areas and you know settings and iconic places we'll be able to play and experience. And older on there, that is a fantastic one. Hopefully, we do get to play that because that'll be awesome. Because I'm not, I'm actually not sure we've been able to experience older on in a Star Wars video game properly. Uh, like we could if they added it in to Battlefront. I mean, with Frostbite 3, it's a fantastic planet, lovely scenery, and I think it would be amazing to be able just to play that, um, to, be, to be able to experience that as well. Uh, and of Coruscant, of course, and Yavin. Uh, we've seen Yavin, Hearth, and Endor before, and Coruscant in the previous Battlefront maps, uh, Battlefront uh, game, so that wouldn't be anything new. Uh, but with Frostbite 3, it would be fantastic to see that. But uh, he also says that, or whoever this is, says that they saw the listings for Tatooine. Tatooine Episode 1, Tatooine Episode 4, and Tatooine Episode 7. So I'm guessing that maybe we could be seeing different variants of the same map. Uh, just like in Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2, there were, I think, two versions of most of the maps. So you had uh, Tatooine Dune Sea, and then Tatooine... Uh, I've forgotten what the other one was, but there was two Tatooines and there was two Hoths and there was two Bespin maps. One was Bespin Platforms and one was Cloud City. Uh, so you kind of had two variants of the same map. So I imagine that's what they're going to do again in this, uh, but they're going to do it for different episodes this time. Um, but of course, this is just speculation and rumour, uh, so don't get too, don't get your hopes up too much, but I'd love to see Alderaan in there. I think that would be a fantastic thing to see. Uh, but when it says Tatooine Episode 7, um, and it says that we'll get and a few points back, it says that we're going to 
actually see Battlefront link into Episode 7, I wouldn't be surprised if it was actually in there. Um, since we did see in the Star Wars 7 trailer a what looked like Tatooine, a desert planet. Um, so, you never know. You never know. So, be on the lookout for those. And I would just love to be able to play all those maps on multiplayer, especially with all you guys. <laughs> that would be amazing on Frostbite 3. The last point is one that I thought I had to mention because it's one that either would excite some fans or aggravate many others. And that is the downloadable content plan for the game is extremely aggressive. Expect up to five DLC packs for the game, with the first coming out before the end of 2015. Each pack will be themed, with the first two or three being exclusively based around content from The Force Awakens. Now... Um, of course, we all expected, you know, DLC to come out like this, just like Battlefield 4, um, you know, from EA. It's just EA, we all know. Um, so, it's something that we shouldn't really, really be surprised about. Um, so, I'm expecting to see, or see it happen just like Battlefield 4, all the DLC to come out like that. But it says that the DLC will be themed, and the first two or three exclusively, exclusively being based around Force Awakens content... Um, so maybe if this is correct, or this turns out to be correct, or we get DLC for the game, um, they'll continue to add more to the game from The Force Awakens, from the new trilogy, to give us a more of a fresh setting, a campaign, a multiplayer type thing that we can all experience as Star Wars fans, and uh, experience a new uh, era in the Star Wars universe. That'll be fantastic to see. So, if it does happen like that, I'll be glad if they do um, theme them as a Force Awakens because we need something new and fresh to experience. But also, uh, if they were to bring out that many, up to five, uh, I would expect to see either the Clone Wars if it's not exp if it's not in the actual game itself when it's when it actually comes out, or maybe some kind of classic map DLC. Uh, that brings maps back from Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2 that we can all either vote on as the community or, you know, that guys can choose themselves. So that'll be fantastic to see. Those kind of DLCs, I think, would make the game good. But hopefully they don't they don't charge too much, you know, if they do bring out D DLC, which it probably will. Um, so I'm hoping that doesn't put anyone off the game and it doesn't ruin it a little bit. Uh, but... Everything else, I think that the game is going to be fantastic. I think DICE are working really hard. It looks like they are, um, from what we've seen on Twitter, from the developers uh, putting their tweets out. They look really happy, really positive about the game. So that's always a bonus, and expect a lot more in the spring of 2015, which is coming really soon, um, you know, like a big reveal for the game. So that'll be fantastic. So thank you for watching, and please do leave all your thoughts and comments below in the comment section. Uh, and tell me what you think of each point. I've left a link to the rest of the points in the description below because I didn't really want to go through them all and take up too much of your time. I would rather you uh, go through the list yourself and make a judgment um, afterwards, you know, after you've heard me speak about mine. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments uh, below, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>